Um, we'll start with the work session items, Kim. We have a couple documents for signature. Yep, we have uh, order conditions for 172 Spring Street and a certificate of compliance for 55 Fruit Street. Both uh, were yeah. voted on at the last meeting. All right. Um, and we signed those at the last meeting, so we should be good, right? Uh, you'll need to sign the physical paper tonight. Okay. All right, the draft minutes for August 9th. Did everyone have a chance to look at those? Any questions or comments? Again, motion to approve those minutes. I'll make that motion. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, 242 Hayden Road got continued. Uh, so we'll move on to Crandall Hicks Company, 27 Lumber Street. This is a request for an extension permit, and it's the Hopkinton Swim and Tennis Club at 27 Lumber Street. Yep. So I believe um, a representative from Bowler is here tonight, Mr. Kucich. Sorry, yep. I'm mispronouncing oh, that. Kucich, you got it. Did I get it? Okay. Um, so this is the Hopkinton Swim and Tennis Club. Um, they had pulled permits, I believe, in 2019. They started construction in 2020, but had a shutdown period uh, due to COVID. So they're looking to get back up and running, and their permit expires, I believe, this fall um, or this December. So they're they're within that 30-day window okay. for the extension request. Um, We've done a pre-construction meeting out there. They have all their ducks in a row, and I expect them to move forward with construction soon. So I would recommend the um, issuance for a period of three years. Okay. Yeah, I saw an excavator out there today, actually. So they started the earthwork. Yeah, I think they're they're getting ready to start up. They've got all the erosion controls in there and the machinery out there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to motion to approve the extension request for three years. I'll make the motion. And a second. <coughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I missed the move. I said hello. We'll do that. Thank Have you. Good night. Yep, you too. Um, Lucia, this is a request for a certificate of compliance. Do you have a representative? Uh, Mark Brown's here with Gardner Consulting here on behalf of Don here. So this is um, for four Valentine Circle. This was a COC for the original order of conditions that was issued for the roadway. So uh, I was at the commission about a month ago, and we were talking about the original, the new order that had been issued, and that order was issued because there were outstanding items with the original permit and that, that expired and the proposed house. Those were the two outstanding issues. And so that order was issued to allow work to be completed for outstanding issues with the uh, the current permit that we're looking for a certificate of compliance on and then also for the construction of the house itself. So um, this is basically a request for the original permit to be closed out. Now the original perm the updated permit which was issued to close out the original permit has been issued over the COC. That's a rough really quick summary because I know we have a large agenda tonight. Um, yep, no, we appreciate that. We, you guys were here just recently on the other um, COC, so I think we're good there. Kim, do you have any concerns with this? Yeah, so just in looking at the original order, 485, um, I noticed that the order also encompassed the actual Valentine's circle extension portion. Um, okay. which hadn't kind of been captured in the later order from 2013. So I just um, requested of Mark to take a look at the culvert, um, just because the culvert crossing was part of that original order. Mm -hmm. So these are some photos that Mark provided today, which are great. Um, you can see the box culvert. And I also went out today just to get my eyes on it. Um, caveat that I'm not a licensed professional engineer, um, but I just kind of took a look for stream crossing standard um, purposes, obvious signs of erosion or scour, and I didn't see any. Um, so from a lay person's perspective, this culvert is in okay shape. Okay. Um, so, you know, we did capture all the wetland replication work in the other um, order from 2013 that we already issued the certificate on, so I would recommend a closure here unless you feel that a uh, engineer looking at the culvert is pertinent. 
I don't think so. It's a residential driveway. Uh, you didn't see any signs of deterioration or um, so I think I'm good, but I'll open it up to comments from the commission. Good. Okay. Okay, if I can get a, a, a motion to issue the COC for <coughs> um, the reference property. So moved. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? All right. The motion carries. Thank Mr. you. Chair? Uh, yes. I just wanted to uh, remind the applicant that any future repairs through the culvert should be permitted for the commission. Yes, and I did talk to Don Lucier, who's the former owner. I told him that he should make sure that he has all his documentation scanned and sent to the current owners of both properties, just so they're aware of the conditions. So he's going to be doing that just to make sure that they're they're up to speed on everything and have some of the history of the documents, which I think will help make sure that they understand what needs to be done. And um, I'll also ask them to get them my contact information just to kind of relay that comment to you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, we've got a few more minutes for work session. So Legacy Farms uh, Road North and Legacy Farms Road South. Mitigation discussion, Kim? Yes, I don't... Do you want to take that now? Yeah. Yeah. So we sent you a, a quick presentation. I know you have a long agenda tonight, and so this this could be a lengthy conversation if we allowed it to be. So maybe we can have the we'll short version of it. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we can, we can do five, we, I think we can do five minutes if, if if Kim pulls up the presentation that we put together. Okay. So here, here's the short version. We have the Legacy North and the Legacy House as two expired orders of conditions that go back quite some time. Mm -hmm. The projects. Uh, and first, the infrastructure is largely complete. It never came in before you guys for a certificate of compliance. So we're looking to do that. The issue is, uh, yeah, okay, we can we can start with this. It's fine. Okay, but like, start wherever you want. No, no, but, go, go okay. the, the issue is that the Legacy Farm project had several sizable mitigation areas on both the north and the south project. Those were two separate permits. Mm -hmm. The hydrology of the area has changed somewhat substantially since this was built by two things primarily one is turning off the irrigation pumps that were used to treat for like the legacy farm um you know the will uh, what was it called the uh, western nurseries yeah right so that drew a lot of water and suppressed the water table kind of so on the screen right secondly now. there's been beaver activity out there as well and i know personally from working on other projects throughout legacy post-construction that wetland lines are throughout substantially larger than where they were at the time the project was approved. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not just an isolated spot. I think it's somewhat throughout the, the project. This is the proposed replication areas or mitigation areas in the VHB plans, M1 and M3, but east and west, BVW up top, down below with some buffer zone work. When we go out to these areas today, so basically what happened was they, they didn't build most of these areas as was, as was designed, right? It was intended to have all these wetland replication areas. Some were kind of built, most of them weren't. But when you go back out there now, not only are the areas that were intended to be created as wetlands already wet, the wetlands are substantially larger yeah. than those areas to begin with. So if we go in there now, not only do we not have an order to do the work, but we'd be working now in wetlands. And I'm not sure that all the mitigation as was designed and intended is appropriate to implement today. So I need to work with you guys, I think, a little bit to think this through, uh, because I think we have actually, not just a little bit, but maybe 10 acres or more of more wetlands out there than, than what was original. So this is, this is the, um, the south property. Mm -hmm. That's what was proposed for mitigation. If you go down, uh, oh, go back up one. So this is what you see out there now that for actual conditions so that green area the bvw is about twice the size of what was intended for bvw replication area by uh, by my own field delineation of what's there today okay so we have so we're supposed to have like about a third of an acre we now have like two-thirds of an acre of wetlands just in that one spot that's okay. not even rec reconning the whole thing so then if you go to the north project which is the next slide down this is the north project we had three mitigation areas Pretty, sm pretty small sections. The M5, M6 were supposedly these like stream valleys that were supposed to be enhanced a lot. If you go and look at them in the field, they'd be near, 
I mean, very tricky to construct. One's in a huge rock gully with a bunch of mature trees. Kind of hard to understand what was intended, to be honest. But I want to focus the attention on M2, that little green dot, okay, was about 4,000 square feet of BVW creation that was intended there. And if you go to the next slide, what, if you go out there today, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find two acres of wetlands there that weren't created by pur on purpose. <laughs> that just has happened, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the site. And that's just that one spot, never mind reconning the whole rest of it. Right. So there's a disconnect on the field conditions as was sort of set forth when this project was approved versus what you find today. Right. We want to get COCs. Our mitigation's not going to match what was intended. Right. So I, I'm here to brainstorm. It's maybe not the appropriate forum when you have an audience of 50 people and a, and a complicated project, but maybe just the um, authorization for me to maybe work with Kim on this offline and come back to the commission with some concrete suggestions on how to deal with this. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, you know, I've been out there. I, I do know that the wetland areas are thriving. Um, that you've pointed out, I didn't realize that they were doing that well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, why don't we get you to connect with Kim? Maybe have Joe go out and take a look at it, um, so you can give us your take on it, Joe. And you know, if what you're telling us is the case, which I think it is, um, you know, I don't think there's the need to do any more work. Um, maybe what we could do is um, you know if you could talk to your client and see if maybe they would be amenable to putting some kind of educational signs out there mm -hmm. you know for because I know one of the areas is along the footpath um, you know you could put a sign out there so maybe birdhouse you know to enhance the habitat sure um, rather than since we don't have to do the replication area right so maybe I can meet with Joe and Kim on site with these plans in hand and look these things over and sort of talk it through come back with yeah some mm -hmm. Correspondence between everyone. That sound good to you guys? Because our ultimate goal here is to get to the CSC part right. of, of the whole project, and it's not a small project. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Does that sound reasonable? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. I just have one comment or question. Um, it looks like the area that you have highlighted is right next to the area that's still being developed. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance that that green could change as they finish developing that area? Is, is a discussion about that green area premature? Because it could, I don't know, could it shrink as they finish that part of the project? Uh, perhaps, I mean, I can show you a picture of what it looks like now. If you go to the very last slide of this whole thing, I got a bunch of pictures at the end, but the very, I think the bottom one, that one, uh, yeah, go up one. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, yeah. So this bottom right hand corner, that's what that looks like right now. It's basically a lush, wet meadow full of uh, sensitive fern and all kinds of, you know, uh, wetland uh, yeah. sedges and rushes. It's quite lovely, actually. So so there's, there's a lot of positive things going on in there. How it could change? I mean, maybe we can have that conversation and yeah. report back to you. Sure. Uh, that might be yeah. appropriate. I, I wasn't looking yeah. for a real answer now, but it was a thought yeah. as I looked at the maps. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the other side. But I appreciate you too. giving me a few minutes tonight, yeah. you know, yeah. just to sort of put this thought in your head to start mulling on it a little bit, but that's what we're wrestling with. Okay. So. Sounds good. All right. All right. Chair? Yep. Yes, Kim. While we're mulling on thoughts through our heads, yeah. I would just put it through to the applicant that um, the town of Hopkinton is looking forward to mitigate for climate change. Um, so in terms of wetland mitigation, stormwater impacts, flood control, um, pollution attenuation, that might be stuff that you know we're going to keep in mind as we go through and have this evaluation on has the mitigation requirement been met or not. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just some food for thought. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank okay, you very much. Thank you. Yep. Nice Bye -bye. seeing you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll move along to the new hearings. Um, so we have 30 West Main Street, 0 Elm Street, and 0 West Main Street. This is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, November 15th, 2022 at 7 o'clock at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by Juan Lee, YR Partners Investment, LLC, to determine the limits and regulatory status of on-site wetland resources. The location is 30 
West Main Street, zero at West Main Street, and zero at Home Street. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Rob Marini at Native Tech, 31 Monroe Street in Lynn. And I delineated the wetlands according to the Wetlands Protection Act and the Town of Hopkinton uh, Wetlands uh, Ordinance. There's, uh, let's see, I, if you do it this way, I might as well go all the way near the end is the plan. Yep. There's a little loud part. They notified the abutters, and that, that's all copied in there. Uh, the butter's within 200 feet. I believe that's the regulation. Uh, let's see. I could point to it. I don't know if there's a mouse with a an indicator on it. No, unfortunately, we don't have it. Right. I can just point to it. Um, there's two intermittent streams. They're flowing to the northeast. The BVW is delineated. Well, we started along Elm Street. This is all uh, BVW to the to the right of way. So we just ended it. it. Goes all the way down, goes along, and then drops off the side here. Pick it up again. Thank you. Goes along and around the intermittent stream, back and around. It's really, a couple of streams, and it picks up again along this intermittent stream and out. So that's wetland, this is wetland. Uh, most, of this, uh, most of these three parcels, this is uh, U1832, U1819, oh, it's on a zigzag. And that's a zigzag one, like that. And U1833, zero, that's this one here. Uh, so, there's not uh, the the upland in these these three lots uh, is is in here. This entire lot is upland. We didn't see any riverfront. Um, I have documentation to prove that. When we were there, I understand that uh, when we were there is uh, by the time we finished the delineation, it was in an extended drought. But even prior to that. Uh, there wasn't any uh, flow, um, not continuous flow. Uh, and you judge riverfront based on the most recent USGS map and the indication in the, in the legend. That's according to the Wetlands Protection Act. The indications in the legend that describe whether it's uh, perennial or intermittent. There is... Uh, I'm sorry? Sorry, this probably isn't an appropriate time to speak, but I, I do have a video um, of... Can we just hold off and let him finish this presentation, and we'll open out to public comment. Thank you. I mean, it doesn't... We, I conducted stream stats on the, uh, the flow probability of uh, a year, a perennial flow, and it's, it's 0.224. It's not, uh, it's not anywhere near... Um, perennial flow according to stream stats. Even that's if you were looking at that method. Um, I mean, I've, I've gone through the comments from Lucas um, Environmental. Um, I can go through there. I can, I can respond to every one of their comments if you'd like. Um, uh, probably yeah, why don't we, uh, so uh, I think we're good, thank you. If we can just have Joe run through your comments uh, sure. based on your review. And then um, once we get through Joe's comments, you know, we can oh, okay. sure. respond. We're probably not going to be able to respond to all of them tonight. Um, we have a fully packed agenda, so yeah, I understand. We'll, we'll touch on the high points and um, continue it out to the next meeting. But go ahead, Joe. So I, I did go out to the site uh, and review the uh, wetland delineation line. Um, in, in general, um, my opinion is probably that it needs to be looked at again. 
there were a number of areas where I felt the line was either uh, relatively low uh, or even uh, in some areas high by maybe as much as 30 feet. Uh, in some spots, uh, as far as low uh, number of flags, they were probably about 10 to 15 feet too low. There, uh, I also did uh, note that there was a um, uh, wetland um, finger, what I call it. That it's an extension of the wetland uh, in the area of flag N20 that extends uh, up along that uh, stone wall generally, um, maybe 100-ish feet up along that stone wall. Uh, another smaller finger around flag N35, uh, neither of those was, was delineated. Um, also noted that uh, there's the flags are placed uh, generally much farther apart than, than normally uh, uh, in the delineations. Uh, many flags about 60 feet apart, some uh, 90 to 100 feet, and they don't necessarily uh, uh, cover the uh, variances in the wetland uh, between between those flags. Uh, so I recommend if any additional flagging or reflagging was done, that the flagging be placed closer. Uh, 20 to 25 feet is what we typically look for. Uh, correct, Joe, Jim. Well, well, my rule of thumb is you're supposed to be able to stand at one flag, turn your head, and be able to see the next yeah, one. Yeah, and in many of these flags, I couldn't see the next flag, even with the leaves off, and I had to, you know, walk halfway, stick my auger in the ground, and get an idea where the line was. Um, I also did note there is an isolated depression on lot uh, U18320, 3 um, which uh, has wetland vegetation, and at least some hydric soil in the middle of it. Um, that should be looked at uh, more closely to see uh, how big of an IBW area might be there. Um, no other wetlands uh, were observed on the site. Uh, I think it looks like on the plan that the, the wetland line uh, connects between, let's see, a couple of the flags. Uh, between flag N11 and N12 and N14 and N15. Uh, and in those areas, uh, the stream, the wetland actually uh, continues off site and, and those should not be uh, connected. Uh, they should start and stop. This is where. Right, the in there the wetland in continues. Here is where it continues. That's where it continues off site. Uh, I did do a preliminary stream stats evaluation, um, and the applicant is correct that, that it's all mapped as intermittent stream uh, uh, on the USGS TOEFL maps. Um, but if you do a stream stats uh, at the junction of the streams in the uh, northeast corner, uh, you do meet the uh, greater than a half square mile um, watershed and a flow rate of greater than uh, 0 0.1 uh, cubic feet per second at the 99%, um, which under the regulations would indicate a perennial stream. So I'd recommend that the uh, location of where it becomes perennial uh, be uh, defined uh, by the applicant uh, in that location uh, surveyed in the field. Also noted that the, the flood zone line is shown on the plan. Um, didn't seem to correspond with the flood zone line as shown on the mass GIS mapping. Um, relative to the property lines, um, it looked a little bit shifted. So I'd recommend that that be looked at again just to make sure that it's being uh, shown properly on the plan. Um, and a few other minor, more minor items, uh, no narrative uh, was submitted. It would uh, recommend a narrative be submitted just uh, describing a little bit of what uh, was being delineated out there. Um, the coordinates on the wetlands form uh, appear to be somewhat off-site uh, just by a little bit, so those should be looked at and corrected. Uh, form A uh, notes that uh, uh, BBW is present on the site. That should be uh, updated to indicate that bordering lands are the flooding and uh, also apparently riverfront area um, uh, are present on the site. 
Uh, the NRAD checklist was submitted, but uh, was not filled out, so I'm not sure what exactly was uh, in total submitted by the applicant based on the checklist. Uh, and there were several errors on the BBW delineation forms uh, relative to calculating dominance, um, and that should be looked at uh, and, and corrected. There was a potential vernal pool on one of the lots as well, wasn't there, Joe? Yeah, the isolated, um, mm -hmm. isolated uh, on uh, U18320, uh, I'm not real confident that it's a potential, that's a uh, vernal pool. It looks like it's probably somewhat ephemeral, but it would be good to, you know, have some eyes on that in the spring uh, to see how much ponding actually takes place. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions or comments from the commission members at this point? Um, do you have any questions or comments, sir? Uh, I could go through uh, uh, these comments. I don't think we're going to have time to do that tonight, unfortunately. Uh, if you can provide a written response, that would be helpful. I mean, I think it's probably going to make sense for you and Joe to probably meet out on site, work through some of the um, disconnects on this. I mean, I think the... It's up to my client, whether they want to okay. um, do that. Uh, I, I just, um, I mean, I went through, I went through all these comments and um, I, there's a few glitches in the forms, but basically, I mean, I could go through these comments one at a time. And, and I have, I have, I have a response to all of them. Yeah, we're not going to have time to do that at the public meeting tonight, so it'll have but to be in writing. Right. Okay. That's what I've been preparing for all day. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't, we don't have the time to go through it. But that's what that's what we're here for, isn't it? I'm I'm just I'd be glad to go over my responses and it, well, it it's it, what it's okay, it, so hold it's on a second. So if there are a couple minor comments and I think we could work those out um, tonight. But I think with the list that Joe just went through, the comments are fairly extensive. Um, there's uh, a number of areas in the delineation um, where Joe disagrees with what has been mapped out on um, the documents that have been provided to us. So those need to be worked out in the field. They're not going to be able to be worked out during a discussion. Um, and it sounds to me like there's going to be additional flagging that's going to need to be done. You know, which again is not something that's going to be resolved here tonight. Um, so, you know, with respect, um, I think we're going to have to continue this. You know, if you can provide, get in touch with Kim and Joe so you can meet out at the site and, um, you know, resolve some of the issues and then, uh, you know, provide a written response. Well, okay, well, no, not really, but uh, I'll, okay. I'll do it. I, I, I just think that there's two uh, that I could refute these comments. You're saying there's a long list of comments, and only a small portion of them are valid. Okay, well, the, co the commission's consultant, I think, disagrees with you there. So, well, okay, well, there's two sides, but okay, it's fine. But I, I can respond to these comments. I'm not allowed to. The chair. Yes. I'll just note it's common practice that we get written responses to the comments. It, it establishes a written record and it allows us to chew on your, your comments in preparation for the meeting. We do that regularly. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so that's the process. Um, you know, I apologize. We just don't have the time to go through it um, in detail uh, tonight. So. Uh, okay. Questions or comments from the audience? Um, yes, sir. Uh, just I, name and address, please. Of course. Uh, yep. Jason Cole, 3 Elm Street. Um, so, uh, myself, I live at 3. Richard over here lives at 5. One of the parcels, the uh, part of the road, exists between 3 and 5. 
Um, that area is where the stream that moves through the area mm -hmm. um, moves closest to the culvert that actually uh, bridges over to the wetlands, I believe, beyond Wood Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a video uh, from September 20th of just last year, or September 2nd of just last year, um, where you can see and clearly hear uh, significant water flow moving through. Yeah, that's, I, I, and I agree with you. You know, Indian Brook is not an intermittent stream yeah. at that location. I mean, I've been in town 25 years and I've always seen it running. You know, oh, yeah. And, it, it, and a couple of these years, especially it with climate change, with him, it, 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 the last several years, it's actually starting to breast the, uh, the shore. Yeah, um, And beginning to actually overflow the contained and defined area. Yep. yep. Um, so that's one of the issues that our consultant um, uh, highlighted in his comments. So we'll be taking a look at that. I thank you so thank much you. for your work. Yep. You're you welcome. Know, we felt that anything that goes on between that area posed a significant concern to us and our property. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Through the chair? Uh, yes, Kim. Maybe we should just explain the ANRAD process versus the NOI process for the benefit of. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, so the, we're going through a process where we're identifying the resource areas on these lots. Um, that needs to be resolved between us, um, the applicant, and uh, the commission's consultant. So just so you're aware, there's no work or anything that can take place on the lots. Um, nothing can be proposed um, formally before our commission until the NRAD has been reviewed and approved by the commission. So that's the process we're going through right now is identifying what the resource areas are um, on, the, on the lots and the property. And based on that, that will provide guidelines for the applicant on you know, what types of development they can do at the property, okay. potentially. So Kim, did you have anything else to add? Yeah, just that this process um, doesn't involve the approval of any work activities. That would be a separate process down the line if that was to occur. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, so we'll continue this out to our next meeting, which is December 6th, and that'll be a remote meeting um, on Zoom. And uh, you know, if you can reach out to our officer, and you know, we'll try to get a site visit coordinated with Joe and yourself. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Mass Leaders Training, 37 East Street. Um, and I'll, actually, this is, um, we'll start with this one, which is the pond dredging, uh, 37 East Street. This is a continuation of a notice of intent that's been dormant for a little while. Yes, and it's totally because it probably won't come to fruition based on the plans that have been submitted for the alternative um, fire protection for the site. Uh, Excuse me, is it possible for the gentleman to sit slightly angled so that we can actually hear what he says? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Connors, do you think you can maybe just kind of turn sideways so the audience can hear you, please? So the pond is at East Street, um, existing dormitory building, and initially we were uh, proposing that as a uh, as a dredging operation to deepen it and provide enough water supply to meet fire protection requirements for a rural uh, water system in an area that is not serviced by municipal water. And that was part of the original um, notices of intent for this. There were probably four or five of them, including the work for the addition, including the new buildings out there, mm -hmm. the water, um, the individual uh, single source water and the septic system replacements. And as we've gone forward with these next three notices of intent, one is for the fire system, which would draw water out of the big pond in the middle of the site. 
and distribute it through a pump system to all the buildings and bring it up to the edge of E Street for uh, uh, an equivalent to the existing little pond there. During meetings with the fire department and uh, their consultant, Maurice Paulette, they've determined that the pond really doesn't have a good water quality. It doesn't have a lot of volume. And the alternative in the big pond, we get down 15 feet with a very uh, clean, clear water and uh, not a lot of geese there. So I think that um, argues in favor of us continuing this until such time as we come to conclusion on the new fire system uh, which goes into the uh, big pond. I'm happy to talk about that now if you want. Sure. Can uh, we so why don't we, so we're going to continue the uh, the pond dredging. Please. Um, notice of intent if I can get a motion to that effect. Um, oh, um, chair? Yes. We should pick a date. Sir. Yeah, that's what I was just going to okay. do. What? Um, Two meetings out. Okay, so that would be December 20th. Let's go three meetings. <laughs> <laughs> That's January 10th? Sure. Okay, so we'll continue it to January 10th. Is that right, Anna? Yep. Okay. Is, uh, so is there a motion? Yep, it's a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so moving along. Um, and we're going to take a look at three NOIs that are kind of part and parcel um, tied together. This is the um, Clinton Street right away, uh, notice of intent continuation for the gas line. Um, the 37 East Street notice of intent continuation for the gas line. And the 37 East Street notice of intent continuation for the fire suppression line. Okay. You have the fire suppression on your skin? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is our large pond. This doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work on the TV. Oh, oh it doesn't? Oh, really? The TV yeah, gobbles the TV, up the laser. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Um, the pond. I try to be blind. It's right in here. There's the uh, Koya building. There's a building that's going up here and a building that's going up here, and there's a driveway that comes all around this site. Um, it's uh, gravel from about there all the way up to about here, and then it goes out towards um, East Street. There's a little um, access driveway that goes across the ball fields that's probably going to stay. In any event, this is the pond, and in this location we're proposing a 8x8 uh, eight eight, um, wet well. That has changed since the last original plan that we submitted a, a month ago or so. Um, it was a bigger uh, structure, but now we're going to make it deeper and bring it out of the, um, the uh, buffer zone there, the inner buffer zone. And we will uh, do directional drilling into the pond to a location where it's about 15 feet deep at this location and have a 14-inch pipe with a 8-inch uh, draw inside it that will run on a heavy-duty uh, generator system and be able to pump water all along through the site and uh, take care of the fire demand. The original plan that you had approved for each one of those buildings had their own fire generator system um, and it would have a large tank uh, for capacity necessary for the size and type of the building. Um, but that no longer is going to be the case because there were too many generators for um, this at um, very high power and they would uh, rely on diesel tanks um, underground. So we had in this particular building here we had a uh, diesel generator and backup system and that we had a little bit of a leak a few years ago that's been cleaned up and we want to get rid of um, as many of these uh, underground storage tanks which heat the building so we're going to go to gas. And in any event, that would be a directional drill operation 
into the pond. The fire department wants another draft line so they can draft independently and pressurize the line throughout the site um, in case they wanted it for East Street or any of the uh, supplemental fire supply in the buildings beyond our uh, original system. So there would be another directional drilling system that goes into the pond and they'd be able to draw off of that. On the far side of the pond, over there, we have two draft lines that have been in um, existence for, oh God, 25, 30 years, maybe more. And those have worked out fairly well. They test those um, every year, and recently they have uh, performed the test, and the water comes out at the described rate, and uh, it's fairly clean, and uh, it would be better system for it. So this particular work would have um, some work in the buffer zone there, some work in the buffer zone here, and it would um, involve a uh, draft line that will come out in the middle of the pond with a screen on it, and then they would um, suck water out of that on an occasional basis if there were a fire, or as a uh, test system once a year, and that would be um, about, we're calling it about a 10 foot square um, penetration in the bottom of the pond, land underwater, where the drill um, would uh, exit and um, have that uh, sleeve come out. Um, I think that's a much better solution to get rid of um, oil tanks, and I think it's a better solution, the laborers do as well, um, for a cleaner um, heating system for the buildings. They're not occupied all the time, so that um, when they're not being used, it's a school, so that a lot of times they won't be used, they won't be mm -hmm. heating them um, quite as much as you would expect, but the ramp up for the heating would be uh, a little quicker with the uh, gas. So that is the system. It uh, will go up to the Maloney building, which is at the top of the uh, plan there. We don't see that, but it'll come by these uh, three buildings and um, also tie into the existing Koya building. Um, so I think that I'm happy to respond to questions and comments on that or continue on with the gas lines. Yeah, why don't we continue on to the gas lines? Okay, can we go to another plan, Kim? I think I've got some colored ones. I'll do Clinton Street first. I do have colored ones here. That's Clinton Street if you want. You guys have the black and white that you're selling? We can, I can do that's fine. Um, there were some maps attached to your response letter, so that be it. Anything out of these maps? No, but that that's this is this is important. Um, you get a chance I didn't have a to that's the uh, old fire system. That's All right, let's go back to the three. Go up three. Okay, I'll stop there. So Clinton Street, uh, we talked about an alternative route on this, and I gave you the uh, plan from the um, uh, contractor and Eversource showing the different routes. Uh, one route which was not shown and we talked about last time was to come in down beside Coal Springs Brook. I had indicated to you that there was some issues with that from a long time ago, but I think this is a better example of that. In this area here, oh, you got the hand yeah. straight up there, so right in that, that area yeah. there, yeah. So that, that's the wetland mapping, and as you can see, it's fairly extensive coming in off Clinton Street. It would be a little bit more of an impact to resources. In addition, the two little um, areas here, there and there, are PVPs. We don't know if they're actually uh, vernal pools or not, but they're listed as PVPs, and I gave you a copy of your map um, of GIS on that. And in any event, we would have to cross the same stream. We're crossing right about here, um, so anyhow we came in, we'd still have to cross at a wider point to get in and be in closer proximity to the wetlands and, and the buffer zones. Uh, the other location was to go down Clinton Street, down East Street, and then um, that gives us about a 
uh, linear foot um, excess uh, length of route from Clinton Street into uh, where the, the uh, dormitory is. And then internally, I think we have about 1,700 uh, feet of inside. So our difference is about 2,600 feet of um, gas line coming down Clinton Street as that alternative. So we've discounted that for the cost. Um, Eversource has said that we're tying into an 8-inch main on Front Street, and we're running 4 inches down uh, into the site and, and then through the site to feed these buildings. And that uh, four inch pipe is running at 60 PSI and it has um, enough capacity that it can be extended as a four inch pipe all the way down Clinton Street to East Street in the future and have uh, the necessary quantities of gas for residential uses in that area. There aren't uh, really any commercial other than up on uh, the uh, YMCA or whatever that is. So I think that um, in terms of answering that question, uh, the, the pipeline that would come down Clinton Street to the site, if we can go down a little bit further. So uh, this is the Anron. You, you want your site, the site plans? Yeah. yeah Please. Yeah, okay, so we got Front Street down in the bottom left-hand corner, and we're coming off Front Street and then going down to our location uh, property that we own and coming through there. The last time we talked, we talked about the two little depressions uh, running in the street and one right behind it that we're, um, our bottom of our ditch is going to be quite a bit above those uh, depressions and not everything. And then we went through the site uh, towards the Maloney building, which is that, um, first building you see there uh, and the crossing is just behind that that's a, a small um, crossing at that location and um, we're we've got a tiny little um, stream crossing at that location so we're, um, we're thinking that that is just a cut and cover we save the soil, put it back in the waters and, um, and uh, restore that wetland and that crossing. We hope to do that in the winter time. We've added some details to the plan on the city that um, the gas company has for the pipelines themselves. The gas company has also opined in an email which I sent you that they want a different type of erosion control and we've added that to it. The Eversource um, has uh, the, uh, logs that you uh, put in. The other discussion we had was the width of the easement. Um, we have uh, worked on that with the uh, contractor. They really want a wider easement. They want 35 feet, but um, we've talked to them and we kept it at 25 in the um, locations uh, that we um, uh, in resource areas uh, and that's based on my discussion with you as to the machines going uh, side by each. You have to open up a trench for some distance, you have to fuse sections of pipe together and then you have to lay them in. Um, it's not a mechanical joint, it's a heated joint. Um, so we've uh, moved some of the uh, staging areas a little bit so that they're not in buffer zones as much as they were, but we still need to uh, have the 25 um, foot uh, path through the woods. Part of the reasons are there are some very, very, very tall pine trees, which um, when they take those down, that's going to be a fairly costly endeavor if they don't have a wide drop zone. Um, and uh, I think that that really makes sense in terms of uh, um, the 25 feet. We talked about uh, putting in a uh, meadow mix in those areas or a conservation mix in other areas and we're happy to do that. And we talked about um, additional trees along the areas where uh, we will have uh, openness based on our tree cutting. So I'd be happy to respond to any questions and comments, but overall I gave you a matrix of the amount of um, disturbance on this 
in terms of actual wetlands, and it's fairly small. There's 350 square feet of BVW for this entire project, which includes the, um, the previous notices. Um, we have land underwater for this particular uh, crossing, and then we have um, some bank for the gas line. And then, again, we talked about the land underwater, underwater uh, in the pond, which we say for the two penetrations is about 10 feet. So the buffer zone disturbance for the utility installation is, what's the total for that? Buffer zone disturbance for the utility, I have that. Uh, Clinton Street 2750, but that's basically in the paved street. Uh, the cross country is 8330. Uh, some of that's previously disturbed. That includes the campus proper, which is when we come out from in front of the uh, Maloney building. And then the fire system is about 4900. And that's all previously disturbed as it was um, existing driveways um, for the uh, site from many, many years past. What was the first? Um, Clinton Street Gas 2750. 2750. You have the my report. Um, we did. I can do that. Yeah. I might need it back for the meeting, but. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I can give that back. Thanks. Thanks. So, Joe, you did not um, have an opportunity to review this yet, yes, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, Joe hasn't, uh, yeah. but excuse me, sir, we'll open it to the public comment in a few minutes. Thank you. Um, so, just because of the holiday on Friday, you know, getting it on Thursday, okay. um, late afternoon, we didn't get a chance to go through it in, okay. in detail. Um, but at this point, um, let me just open up to questions and comments from the commissioners. Um, can I just confirm that 8330 um, disturbance, that's the forest? Is what? The 8330 uh, square foot disturbance, is that the, the gas line going through the forest? It's the gas line going through the forest okay. and through the campus proper that's been developed. Okay. Do we quantify how many trees are going to come down? Yeah, the, I can't do that. Okay. No Does that mean too many to count? Yes. Yeah, too many to count. Yes. Thousands. Uh, yeah. Is there, of the 8330, do you know how much is campus previously disturbed and how much is going through the undisturbed forest? Can I have my plans back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the this is the fifty. There's a piece there, a little bit there for the staging area. There's the hundred. So between 50 and 100 is this. That's outside the 100 till we get to there. I mean, a, kind of a general comment that I have, Mr. Connors, is, um, and I know that Joe hasn't gotten a chance to review this. Um, a little in the 50, go ahead. You know, I'm still a little bit frustrated that, you know, a 25-foot swath of corridor needs to be 
installed for the installation of you know these small utility lines and I get the work that they need to do you know and I know I've worked with contractors in the past and you know there's a lot of pushback they want to do things the easy way um, you know in, in the fact that they're removing trees for staging areas for equipment when there's plenty of room on site where things could be staged where they wouldn't need to take you know upland and buffer zone trees down to do that just kind of you know sits with me like they want to get in and get out and get this done and you know they don't want to be creative about how it's being installed um that's kind of my sense well i understand that you, you know it's a laborers training i mean this is what these guys do for work all the time um, if this is the way they would generally do it well right yes yeah, that's what they're um, training generally yeah. you know <laughs> um folks can we just this isn't productive with you know background chatter um so if we'll open up to the public in a minute it's just not productive uh, so you know i apologize but thank you well I, I let's can we go through these staging areas as a example yeah. yeah this is right beside the street at the end of i think 17 or 800 14 17 or a pipeline so that's got to be an area there that's all we have and for the most part it is out of um, any kind of real resource that's isolated and then the next staging area is we've got that outside the hundred foot buffer mm -hmm. um, we go down and that next staging area is generally outside the hundred foot buffer this one of course isn't but this is the area where we're going to be going under that and we need an area to pile material um, and segregate it so i think for the most part the areas for a, what four thousand feet are of um, pipeline going through the woods really that's i think reasonable i understand you don't like us cutting down trees we have 135 acres. Well, like for example, the staging area right here, why can't they just move this, you know, over into this area outside the buffer zone? Fine. Fine, I don't mind doing that. But, I mean, this this is what, um, I guess, you know, that, that was just one point, and what, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, to take a closer look at this to see, you know, where... Um, you know where we can pair this work back so we're not disturbing as much you know i understand if it's not in the buffer zone we we have no jurisdiction over it so you can do what you want with the trees but in terms of the work that's in the buffer zone uh you know i just if we can be a little bit more creative about you know what's being done um you know I, I, that would make me a lot more comfortable um yeah, my comment would be, what's wrong with Clinton Street? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, we already discussed that. But it's another 2,600 feet of pipeline that we need to cross, we need to put in, yes. which is extremely costly. And there's a um, very wide, as we looked at the uh, cross-section of or the uh, topo of that at the culvert, and we talked about that. We don't know what the soils are like underneath that. Uh, we do know what the soils are like underneath our culverts, um, but we'd have a uh, directional drilling operation in that location, and that's fairly expensive. As a matter of fact, they estimated the directional drilling for this particular crossing um, at forty to fifty thousand dollars, which I uh, indicated in my report or my comments to you. So it's fairly expensive and economically uh, unfeasible as an alternative. yeah it would just you know i understand that they don't want to do it because it's you know it's certainly going to cost a lot more than going through the woods but i mean there is a citation or bylaw you know if there's other feasible alternatives uh that those have to be explored and you know unfortunately the commission you know doesn't take into ac account the financial implications of projects. We take into account, you know, the um, 
you know, resource area disturbance. Um, you know, that's not to say that this other work couldn't be permitted, but I think, you know, a lot more work needs to be done to, in my mind, you know, pare back um, what's being um, disturbed in, in the buffer zone, you know, to overcome this, uh, um, this presumption. Well, we're, we're talking about a, I think it's the numbers, but a very small amount of crossing here, a small amount of buffer zone on a site that's 135 acres, and they don't use all of this land. It, it remains pretty much as it is, other than this drain, other than this gas line going across it. We also have a single source well in this area um, over closer to um, Laurel Canyon that's reserved in perpetuity as a public water supply. So this whole end of the site is going to remain as it is for mm -hmm. a very, very small amount of impact. I think it's been fairly well thought out. Um, we've demonstrated that this is a logical location for this and it's a minimally impacting location for the entire site. We're putting up $60 million worth of buildings and renovations. We have not disturbed really anything out there with all of that. And this is a critical part of it. Ecologically, it's critical in terms of the um, running of generators and heating a building that we get rid of USTs. So uh, yep, I understand that. I uh, can't argue more in favor of this particular thing. With a few tweaks, I don't mind moving, I don't think they mind us moving that staging area a little bit. Um, I'm happy to do that. But I do think that, and we've talked about it in great detail, uh, we need 25 feet to put that in. To dig a tent trench, put the material on one side, open up a length of it, and then lay pipe, fuse it, sand it. It's a, it's a critical piece of infrastructure that can't have leaks or breaks or bad mm -hmm. material around it. No, I understand that. So I would like to at least um, get to the point tonight that we can close our hearing on um, the Clinton Street section of it. I think we've demonstrated that the pipe size would be adequate um, from the gas company's perspective as well as ours. And uh, we are trying to get it in before. Um, the paving season shuts down, notwithstanding the weather this morning. No, I, I mean, I understand that you want to get this going, but, you know, Joe hasn't had a chance to review it, you know, and I think we need to look at this as, uh, you know, I know that separate NOIs that are filed, but I think we need to look at the project as one project. Um, so, you know, given that we haven't been able to go through this in detail yet, you know, I understand that they want to move forward with the construction, but I just, you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but that construction is just on Clinton Street, which nothing's going to change from that. And I think our last meeting, we discussed that everything was fine as long as there's some additional hay bales going down the street. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Melissa, you know, she's not here tonight, but the point that she brought up was um, if there, you know, if it was to go down Clinton Street, you know, with the proposed, um, you know, six inch or four, 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 four inch uh, gas line be sufficient. You know, I, I know you said 60 PSI, um, you know, should be able to provide additional uh, downstream customers with, with gas if they need it. Uh, now, Eversource, I sent you an email from Eversource to me that said Eversource wanted a uh, change to the erosion control. Eversource has gone through these plans from day one, and that's their only change to it. And that 60 PSI and all that was in uh, 
discussions with them over the last two weeks? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I get that the applicant wants to move forward with this, but I think it's just, I mean, you know, these plans are dated July. You know, we got these two weeks ago, and they're asking us to just push this forward and, and approve it. Um, you know, and it just doesn't, you know, it seems unreasonable for me of, of a project of this magnitude to, you know, ask us to just, you know, approve one piece of it so they can move forward with it while the other parts of the project are still being deliberated. Because um, again, you know, I, I look at it as one project in entirety. Well, we understand that. We understand that the internal would take two or three meetings. We understood that. But going down the street with a gas line doesn't change anything. If the gas line continues down Clinton Street to east, it's the same gas line. I just, I don't see any reason why you would hold that up. Through the chair? Yes, Can Kim. I ask a question of Mr. Connors? I was under the impression that DBW um, had a, a moratorium on excavation in the road starting on November 15th, which would be today. We're working with the DPW on that. <laughs> So have, do you have the approval or? It will depend on when the paving plants are going to shut down. Okay. They're signatories to this application. Yes, they are, yeah. Okay, yeah. If we can't dig, if we can't pave, we're not going to dig. But, you know, it, the last two weeks have been wonderful weather. And paving plants, I've seen them stay open well into December. This is about a five to six day job, four to five six days that we'd go down that street and be done with it. And then we could work this particular project through the winter in when all the frogs are hibernating and that. So I think that makes sense. And I would request that you give that serious consideration to allow us to do that, pending, of course, the weather conditions. Okay, well, let, let us let the commissioners mull that over for a few minutes while we open up to comments from the public. I just ask one question sure, to the yes. chair. You, you had mentioned that Eversource looked at the plans on the gas line down Clinton Street and they just had changes to the pay bales and no other changes. If it were to go all the way down Clinton Street to East Street, would they have changes then? No, it would be the same four inch pipeline. It's okay. a function of pressure. And they have quite a bit of pressure there. And there's not a lot of customers. Okay. Through the chair, I, I'm sorry, George, I, I don't have that email. Well, through the chair, I think part of Melissa's question was, what if there was to be more development? Would that be sufficient piping size and PSI? Which might be a reason to hold off on the early part of Clinton Street. Because other source might say, oh, as long as you're going down, there could be new houses. We might want more capacity. Mm -hmm. well, that section of town is built out. All right, let's okay. think yes. on this for a few minutes and let's uh, yeah, read comments this. from the public uh, real quick, Mr. Connors. Yes, yes sir. We're reading 37 front. Possible to get a cost comparison between these two plans? Yeah. To see exactly, I know it's probably more expensive, but is it possible to see the difference? And is it going to be worth butting heads going through the woods here? I mean, I make a living cutting these trees, but I still, <laughs> well, what I've done, but I still understand that Clinton Street straight shot, East Street straight shot. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to worry about any replication, any buffer zone, re reseeding, retreating, or do whatever you want to do. And by the way, it would be nice to have a primer to come here. I've read about 10 abbreviations tonight. <laughs> the only one I understand is BVD. Other than that, I have no idea what we're talking about. No, really, they're trying to pick it up. But anyway, I would think a comparison submitted by them. Yeah, we do have an alternatives analysis. Um, I'm not sure how much detail it goes into the financial aspects, but to my point earlier, you know, we don't really consider the financial implications um, as part of our uh, approval of the project or denial of a project. You know, we just environmental. It's, it's impact. environmental impact. Yeah, right? I'm just curious. That's all. There's a big difference. It's that big of putting up a big fight, and I understand yeah. that too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Well, I did indicate 
that the interior one was forty to fifty thousand dollars difference with the um, directional drilling alone. So to cross that three hundred and fifty feet and the stream was um, okay. as opposed to open cut uh, was. Um, Uh, Ma'am, did you have a question? I did. Um, Claire Bet, 92 Clinton Street. Mine is the funky shaped lot that you see that the, the pipe runs right alongside of. Um, oh, that's one. That's yeah, 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 that line, okay. that's my lot. Right. So, yes, funky shape. But, <laughs> so my question is, laborers training use as one of their uh, reasons for going through the forest that they're changing from oil to gas, which is environmentally more desirable. But if they went down Clinton Street and down East Street, it gives the rest of us and the remainder of Clinton Street and East Street the opportunity to do the same thing. We're in a part of town that don't get water and we don't get sewer, and it would be very lovely to have the opportunity to also be environmentally friendly and get rid of our oil and have the opportunity to have gas. And it just seems it's very sad that for the sake of some money that we are prepared to lose yet another piece of pristine forest when we have seen decisions in the town so far that we have come to regret because so much of it has gone. And having lived there since 1999, I know that I get far more wildlife in my yard now since Legacy Farms mm -hmm. because it has nowhere else to go. It comes to us. And if we mess with this, I mean, we have had um, applications for subdivisions there that have been turned down because of the wetlands. And yet we are prepared, questioning here, we are prepared to mar that pristine area for a damn pipeline that's just going to go to one person mm -hmm. to laborers training camp. One. Whereas if it went down the road and up East Street, it could actually benefit more people. I thought. With an okay. action, I might add. Mm -hmm. You got thought with an action. It's great. We love that. Oh, <laughs> if it has more sway. Lovely. <laughs> Uh, do you have a comment, sir? Uh, yes, Bruce Brubaker, 82 Clinton Street. Uh, I just noticed that Mr. Connors threw out two numbers. One of them was $60 million, which is what the laborers are spending on this project. And yet, the alternative to go all the way down Clinton to E Street seems to be rejected because it costs an extra $50,000. Mm -hmm. And you can That's see that I think Mr. Regan's suggestion that we hear an actual number for this alternative is reasonable. I understand that according to 310, you're not able to actually require numbers from the applicant. However, I think that economic viability is also not a reason, as you've mentioned, to reject the alternative proposal. So the, the overall good is more to the point, and the applicant's economic um, hardship of paying for whatever it is, well, I don't think it's a hardship. 60 million was that number. Let me just correct what you said. I said that the crossing of the BBW at 350 feet and uh, 15 feet of stream, as a example, was forty yes, to fifty thousand dollars more money. That's about a nickel, sir. That's an example. Okay, of let's let's not go back and forth. Okay. In the site, not the cost to go down Clinton Street. Or the, ex or the directional drilling underneath Cold Springs Brook. I think if you looked at those and tried to compare them, that the additional work to go under the brook at Clinton Street is enormously longer and um, would be commensurately more, much more money. We have a real number to cross on site the 350 and the 15 feet, and that's about 40 to 50. That's just an example. So directional drilling is fairly expensive, mm -hmm. and that area down there, we don't know anything about it. We know everything there is to know about our interior site. We've got ground penetrating radar, um, ground penetrating radar information where we're going to be um, doing the work. We've got test holes. We know the soils in that area. So um, it's not comparing sixty million dollars to four, forty thousand. It's just not. Okay. No, that's clear. Did you have a question, sir? And you were looking at the plans earlier? No, I'm just angry at. Okay. At Labor Roots. They have a history of, of uh, 
disregarding the environment down there back from 40 years ago when they ripped out a whole bunch of wetlands and put in that pond and that big pond behind the building and, and then you know with the stream that they rerouted and the mishandling of the of the brick rack that when they had to restream move the stream and then they didn't do what they were told to do by the conservation commission with the cleaning out all of that uh, that grass that a australian grass kind of thing that's a invasive species mm -hmm. and that's taken out all of the brook and all of the the pond downstream okay so they, they just i don't trust them okay and what was your name and address just kevin so jackson 132 clinton Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jim Araya. I live at 86 Clinton Street. I am the property that the pipeline is going to go, uh, the pipeline go right up against up the side of my driveway and up my property and then around the back of it. Um, so my concerns, and I don't know if they're only my concerns, it's my first time on that lady's hearing, so my apologies. I don't know if there are any safety issues with the fact that there's going to be a gas pipeline going right in front of my, right by the side of my house. and front of the picture window. I'm not sure if, um, for example, once the pipeline is laid down, I'm not sure if where those trees are going to get cut down, if the trees are going to be allowed to grow back at any point, or if I'm going to have an, an eyesore of 25 foot cleared um, mm -hmm. pipeline there in front of me that I'm going to be looking out of the picture window every day. Uh, I have another concern in that um, I have an in-ground pool behind the house on that side of the property as well, a little further back. And I'm not convinced that there's a 25, that there's 25 feet between my pool and that wetland area if they're saying that, if everyone's saying that there's 25 feet that are needed in order to do that construction as well. So, and I do agree with my neighbor that's saying that the, um, we have deer and turkey uh, and other wildlife that goes through the yard almost on a daily basis. and I, I do share the concern that I'm, I'm sure that that would have some sort of impact on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, David Fajardo, I'm at 88 Clinton Street um, next door. And I, I think doing this hearing, I think I've heard that was a pro for having that gas pipeline go through the forest is this gentleman's cost. Um, and the cons outweigh those costs um, in spades. You're disturbing. I know you're not calling, you must not be calling wetlands, but it's wet back there. Um, I've been there for 19 years. You you're clear cutting 50 year old trees, um, thousands of them. You're destroying, probably disturbing some of our, you know, uh, property with noise, diesel fuel machinery, construction vehicles in our backyards. Um, you're probably negatively affecting our home values as he's spending 60 million bucks um, of <coughs> somebody else's money. You're creating an eyesore, and, what, and it's now a beautiful, undisturbed, wooded area with, like I said, deer, foxes, bobcats I saw the other day, owls, raccoons, the whole, the, the whole thing. It's all, um, I heard earlier talk, talking about undis you know, or previously disturbed areas. Clinton Street is previous, previously disturbed. You can run the pipeline down there. It's going to cost you extra money. But net-net, it's going to benefit the town taxpayers and not a group of uh, the school that does not pay taxes in the town. Thank you. Okay. I have one more. Yes, ma'am. Laura Thorson at 90 Clinton. Um, those four houses that it's going directly behind, his, his, hers, and mine, all those basements, they had to blast because it's a ledge under there. What's that going to do with blasting all the way down that pipeline? Um, I think they're going 30 inches deep uh, is my understanding for the depth of the piping and based on the um, did they do a ground penetrating radar or how, how did they map it out Mr. We, Connors? We've gone through there with probes for the uh, for the pipeline itself just the auger type things. So they've done some preliminary work to see so you know, no if there's any ledge. Of large rocks, they're going to be able to excavate them and move them? Um, rocks? I didn't hear that. There'll be no blasting of large rocks to, 
to make them smaller? You can excavate everything that's out there? Well, we were going to go in there with small machinery. If we hit big rocks, we'll probably break them into place. I don't think we will hit big rocks. Um, we haven't hit large rocks on the site, uh, but we're trying to work in a 25-foot um, width thing. We, we can't put a large excavator in there. Um, okay. Any other questions? In the audience. All right. Yes. I have one question. Um, have you already obtained a grant of location for the work on the road? I can't hear you. Grant of location? I'm sorry? Have you obtained a grant of location in the proposed gas line? Won't you need to obtain that from the, the town before you can put it in? No. It's a private service. All on Clinton, Clinton Street to put no, anything Clinton, Clinton Street? Street? The town has signed off as co-applicants on the water, on the gas line in Clinton Street. Co-applicants for this application, but won't they still require grant allocation that has to be obtained? I would think so. Through town meeting? No. No. It's just a, it's a private utility. So like we will authorize it. Do you have, I just don't understand how you would plan to do the work next week without having that authorization already. The town has signed the application as applicants to put the pipeline in by Eversource. But the town, the grant location is required for any private utility in a public right of way and that can only be authorized. It's not a private utility. Eversource gas utility. line? In Clinton Street is not a private utility in the public road. It's a public utility. Public utility. Gas lines are public utility right. approved. It's owned by a private industry, but it's available to the public, just like the electric lines. But it's not being put in by the town. It's not being put in by the town. Town TPW has signed as. You said sign this application. Every single city and town I've worked for, you had a grant location awarded by the legislative body before you could put in a utility um, in lieu of like an easement. But I can follow up with that question. Yeah. Uh, you, they ran it down Front Street and Clinton Street 7, 10, 12 years ago. I'm sure Eversource probably went before the town got permission. Not that I recall. I'm sure every source wouldn't be putting it in if they didn't have the authorization to do it or the right to do it. And they're option. the contractor. It's a dollar contract that we sign with them. Um, no, that's a that's a good question. Um, and I'm just bringing it up in terms of timeline. I mean, yeah, it's very difficult to to start any work right now on the roads. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my sense is it's just, you know, I'm not trying to But your jurisdiction is with respect to wetlands protection. I don't see how we're if impacting the wetlands on Clinton, Clinton Street in any way, shape, or form. I know the chair, I'm not even opposing that it's water stuff right in the road. It's just this kind of pressure to get it done so that they can start digging now, I think is an unrealistic schedule. So I, I think you should continue the hearing. Kim, what's your sense? Uh, I'm just feeling like our consultant hasn't really had a chance to look at the responses um, and I get the feeling that, you know, the road, DPW closes the roads unless there's a very special circumstance. So I think it, it would be a difficult battle to get this going next but week that's not to begin with. your purview. That's the but it is our purview to make sure that the data that's submitted is, you know, and in place, said, is proper. And um, we did respond we, to Mr. Lucas's comments the last meeting, before the last meeting, 
and I think we discussed that Clinton Street had really no issues with respect to that particular application. Right, and you know, jurisdictionally, you you are right. Um, you know, the DPW um, can do the work, but you know, we have. Um, in town kind of an unwritten rule that we work with the other departments to make sure that permits are in place and things are properly done uh, before you know approval goes forward so um, you know I, I just feel like I mean this was submitted to us two weeks ago and I feel like we're getting pressured to approve it uh, when we haven't adequately been able to go through all the data and look at it and I understand that with respect to internally on the gas pipeline that leaves Clinton Street but on Clinton Street I just I don't understand what we need to do to meet the requirements that are nebulous well, well, just we don't we did, yeah hold on a second um, we, I mean, they may be nebulous or they may not be, and the point is is that Joe hasn't had a chance to review what's been submitted. Okay, we did respond relative to Clinton Street before the, before the last meeting on the first review that Lucas had. And if those haven't been looked at in the two weeks, I don't know what that means. Certainly I understand that the stuff we submitted uh, Thursday or Friday. Well, why wasn't it submitted in July when, when the plans are dated? I mean, why is this being pushed on us and we have two weeks to make a decision? Because it, it took time to get the pressure from the gas company. We knew where the pipeline was going. Okay, but that's not our problem. No, I understand. You know, they should have thought about this um, and took into consideration. I mean, this is the mass laborers training. This is what they do. And they have yeah, to understand it. Well, they have to understand permitting because it's part of that's what, that's that's my job, Thanks. right? But they've, I mean, and I can show you where the pipeline the, goes. The unions know what needs to be done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. they they know they know permitting needs to be put in place, and it takes time. And um, you know, this isn't you know a, a landscaping company or, or someone who's not familiar with you know this type of work. Um, that, that hasn't done this before trying to get it approved I mean yeah we've had agenda items for other sections of this you know property that we've been working on that have been you know sitting on the agenda for six eight you know close to a year if I'm not mistaken you know we keep continuing those out That's and one. now this is getting put before us and they want us to approve it in two weeks no, that's not correct. We want you to approve the Clinton Street section, okay, which well, doesn't impact anything. And the one that's been continued out for a year is being resolved with a better water supply, okay. more in tune with I the fire department. Right. I, I just don't feel, Mr. Connors, you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I just don't feel comfortable with two weeks of review, you know, and the pressure being put on us as a, a commission, I think, is unreasonable to try to force this through um, right. when we haven't been able to go through it properly. So I, I respect that your client is pressuring you to get the work done, but we, you think? we, you know, we have, you know, our responsibilities too, right? And I understand, and I've relayed that. I've relayed that the stuff on site is going to take some time. I can't explain to them why we can't get on Clinton Street. Because it's all it's all part of one project. That's what you tell them. It really isn't. But it, it really is. Isn't. <laughs> but it Mr. is. Chair, yes. Um, I agree with you. I think it's premature, and I feel rushed to approve this because I think there is a chance that what we approve is all the way down Clinton Street, and that may change whatever source has to say about this section. With respect, going down. Uh, with respect to going down the rest of the way down Clinton Street, Mr. Connors, you've told us twice that you don't know what's underneath the Cold Spring Brook crossing on Clinton Street. It seems to me part of an alternative's analysis would be 
to know what's under there so that we can weigh both routes with full information. No, no I'm not going to argue that. that that's, okay, so. That's really, uh, that's getting beyond the pale. <laughs> we don't have to really investigate the mechanics of doing the work. We have to show that it's much more costly as an alternative. We have two or three. One was to come down Clinton Street and into the site at our second frontage location. We demonstrated that that has more impact. Going underneath Clinton Street culvert, fairly big area, very costly. If we're going to go there, we'll go out and do the analysis. But there's really no need to do that. We know that it's 2,600 more feet, and part of that is directional drilling at a very high cost. A very high cost. Okay. Small section, 40, 50,000. Big section, we're there for a long time. We think about environmental impact, not the cost of the project. I understand that. We also I'd be interested in the environmental impact comparisons of those two routes. We also understood that, too. We have all that work going on out there. We removed individual wells from water supply for a single water supply out in the woods that's going to protect, I don't know, 12 or 14 acres you can't go near. We put in a single source septic system for all buildings. We're taking out oil tanks. No, I, I get the benefits, you know. So it, we can't do that. It's lost on us, I know. Okay, I hope you understand that. No, we do. We and factor it in. Yeah. Um, you know, we we do understand that, you know, we're going to have to continue this, unfortunately, and I apologize. You know, we have, you know, our commission has a responsibility for the town to make sure this is permitted properly. You know, we, we have a responsibility to the neighbors um, whose, you know, whose neighborhood is going to be affected by this. So I, I just don't feel comfortable, um, you know, rushing it. That's all. So I hope your client, you know, the applicant, understands that. Mr. Uh, Chair? Uh, yes. With the, with the premise that one of our tasks is to take the path of least environmental impact, which clearly, seemingly, would be Clinton Street. Is it too much to ask for a rough estimate as to what it would cost to run the pipe down Clinton Street and come in that way? We can give you a rough number. Okay, a couple more questions from you, I guess, and we have to move on. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as benefits, which all seem to be favored around the Neighbors Training Center, uh, is it funded by unions or the state, by the way? Internally. Pardon? Internally, it's their that, money. What does that mean, internally? The laborers. So, unions? Yes. Okay. Just clarifying that point. Anyway, all the benefit seems to be accruing to them. How about some benefit for the residents? Instead of we getting the imposition of all the tree cutting and the disturbance at the back of our lots, we're not getting any benefit from possible hookups, which we should be. If we're bringing a, bringing a gas line into the neighborhood, why don't we have the benefit of hooking up, at least? <laughs> That'd be a minimum benefit, surely, wouldn't it? Uh, all the benefits going to the laborers' guys. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to make sense. Okay, yep. Yes, ma'am. See, we got the required registered letters. But the registered letters just spoke about going east on Clinton Street from Front Street, and that's all they said. The only reason I knew that it was going to come up behind my lot was because I was looking out of my back window and saw somebody in the woods. And I said, excuse me, what are you doing? Because I thought he was in my garden. And he said, oh, well, you know, there's going to kind of a pipe through here, and we've marked it out, and I'm looking at it thinking it's barely 10 feet from my lot line. And that was the only reason I knew that this was going on. So we were not alerted as to what the project was. It said East on Clinton Street. It mentioned no deviation. It mentioned no going through the woods and excavation. Nothing of that. So we were not alerted, as I believe we legally should be. Okay. I apologize for that. Um, that falls on us somewhat, too. Um. Well, I suppose it depends on when you knew. Right. Uh, yes, sir. Well, I, I would only add to that in that when the folks 
were out surveying the property right next to mine and I could see what they were doing and I and at the time I had received the vague notice as well and I went out and actually asked them what they were doing and they said it was for some other project don't worry about it it's got nothing to do with you they were, they were very vague about it and that's the only thing that gives me a concern is they, they seem to have been very vague with all of us it almost seems on purpose for all of this work and now the fact that they're trying to rush it through with you and as the other gentleman points out that the impact is the only positive impact is to them the rest of us are going to have to be dealing with all the impacts of the construction and the rest of it in a pipeline right across from the, the picture window it, it just all seems funny to us like we don't have a good feeling about it, it all seems very suspicious yep got it um, okay so we'll continue this out uh, to our next meeting which is december 6th and that will be remote so you guys won't need to come here you can go on zoom um, okay all right thank you mr connor thank you is this yours oh yes it is <laughs> these colored ones of yours Yep, you're welcome. Okay, Snow 80 Pine Island. This is a notice of intent continuation for a single family home. I don't know what you guys think we're going to get your Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I you believe... You got the EP file number. We did get it. Excellent. Uh, yep. So we called, Christine called a couple times and emailed the more info and she called. So we got that file number, which is a good thing. Yep, and you have the other information that we needed. We got it all under one drawing. Okay. Kim, was there anything outstanding at this point? So we, last time we asked for the ECBs on the plan and um, some information about dewatering plans or intents. So we have the ECB shown on this dotted line and then the applicants provided a dewatering sump if required. I asked for a little bit of additional information on the dewatering sump, which I received. Um, it's going to be approximately two feet deep. I think it will be fine so long as this work takes place when the lake is under the withdrawal um, period. If it happens in the we're on long term, love the deep drawdown between eight and nine feet. Yeah. So that's the the timeline is actually hitting good for not having water in the hole. Right. So that's this winter. Correct. Right. So you'll be doing the work this winter. The, the intent is take the hose down, which the demo permit went in today. Take the hose down, drill the well dig the foundation, put the trap rock in, pour the, pour the footings, put the wall, the wall up. And I haven't got a builder yet uh, because everybody's crazy right now. Yeah. And, uh, but at least get the work that needs to get anything that can be environmentally hazardous to us, which the last thing I want is that thing to fill with water. Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, if the work doesn't get done this winter, we won't be doing the extended drawdown again next winter. Correct. It's going to be, I mean, if we get approval from you, we're pretty much where we need to be with everything else. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I guess, that, you know, if it didn't get done for whatever reason, that you just uh, regroup with Kim to talk about, you know. Well, that's why we did the dewatering, just in case something prevented, at least we have a plan. Yeah, just if, if it's the spring and you're noticing that ground water is right at the surface um, for this particular property, we'll just need to um, come up with a different dewatering BMP. Usually we just do um, straw bales with the filter fabric over it and whatnot. Yep. Um, the takeaway is just not to stick a hose directly in the lake. No, oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you, you got to say that. So. Oh, no, I know. I believe me. Yeah. I'm in the constructors industry. I've yeah. seen a lot of things that aren't really very yeah. right. Very right. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so we'll we'll work through that, and I'll I'll put a provision in, in yeah. your order about. And then it. the only thing which we discussed today was, um, and your name is Joe, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Joe brought up the dock permit. It, it, it the penalty for having not having a dock permit is getting one. When we purchased the property, docks were there when I was a kid. There's been docks on the lake, and 
majority of people probably do not have a dock license. Yeah. I told her we'll go through the motions and get a dock yep. license for both 78 and 80. There's a third dock on 78 that I'm probably just going to rip down. It's it's old, old. Okay. Okay. We, yeah, we don't use it or anything like that. It's it, it's just been there. Yeah. I mean, they were all there when I purchased the property. So. Yeah. So I think we mentioned that you know as part of the process, if you can do the chapter 91 filing. Yeah. But I was un I was under the impression it was through you guys. That's why. I was trying to get an application from the town where it isn't a, a town. Right, right, yeah. They just determined that you guys, somebody's got to say, hey, you need a dock permit. Right, and then it goes through the state. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. so we'll, we'll make that happen. And okay. And we'll send it to her, a confirmation that we have the permits to, to I guess you guys are the ones that hold the record of the town? We keep it. So right, so you'll have it with the file for the yeah. two properties. Okay. Okay. Uh, if I get uh, questions or comments from the audience, questions or comments from the commission, I get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for 80 Pine, Pine Island Road. I'll make that motion. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. No Good luck. Question. Can we get your signatures on something tonight because you're going to be remote the next time? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Be prepped. Excellent. Oh, you had told me that today. <laughs> I, I gotta ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll sign that tonight and then uh, Kim will wish it to you in the next few days. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yeah, then they did, they came out to the site today and did the um, dig safe. Oh, okay. And good. Uh, I already have the contract to get a dig safe number. Mike Shepard has that number with the permit. Okay. And then they're gonna start hay bales this week, you know, the silt fence and, the, and all of the. Yeah, so your mother-in-law must be happy. Oh my oh, God! She's gonna be real happy when it's gone. <laughs> she's gonna be happy not having to go up and downstairs. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with the project. Yep. Thank have you. Good, yeah. Have a good evening, folks. Um, through the chair, not through the trails. Yeah. <laughs> Do we want to uh, quickly um, go on order and take a um, COC before we take the trails, just so we can move yeah. the yeah. audience along? Yeah. Which one was that? Um, the Take LNG, the LNG facility certificate of compliance. Yes. Yeah, so this is our source energy, a request for a COC, and I think um, we are good to go on this one, Kim, right? There were no concerns on your end. Uh, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did see um, the one thing that Joe had pointed out was um, PIVs. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are signs out there that says, um, you know, there what are resources. There are some area. signs that say no construction uh, wetland, no construction yeah. area. Um, and there is a big, tall fence with a barbed wire all the way around. <laughs> 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 there are security people out there too. Yes, yeah, right, yeah. So. and that's the, one of the things that will always be maintained. Yeah. Is yeah. that security fence, so. Okay, so I don't think we have to worry about the PIBs. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I get a motion to approve the COC for Eversource. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. All right. Thank you for waiting. My pleasure. Have a good night. You too. Right thank under you. the <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. The trails. Good evening, Mr. Bemis. My favorite meeting, obviously. <laughs> Becca decided not to come tonight. Yeah, I, I haven't. Yeah, I didn't hear from her. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Do you need to open anything with uh, the first? The first matter is the zero uh, Wilson, so that's town of Ashland property. Uh, nope. Or I think. Okay. Yep. I think we're good with that. No. Okay. You know, we'll let Ashland handle it. Um, unless Kim knows something that. Through the chair? Yes. So you legally opened it at our last meeting. Right, I was okay. going to say, yeah, we were, yeah. Okay, thank Correct. you. Okay, we'll go ahead. All right, so, so okay. okay, Peter Beam is engineering design consultant. So the first item um, that we have before you is an, a you, notice Anna. of intent filing for work that we're going to do in the town of Hopkinton on property owned by the town of Ashland. Um, and it's basically an improvement uh, of this area here. And when we prepared this set of documents the first time and submitted, details were on this plan and we basically superseded it and that's why this big red line goes across the sheet uh, so that this sheet's been replaced by a, a new sheet um, that has two, two separate drawings. Um, 
Thank you, Kim. I wasn't sure whether you have it or not. Um, <laughs> Um, then the other sheets in this set then jump back into the project. So that goes back to Legacy Farm Road, which was zero Legacy Farm Road, and, and that's the other notice. So I'm, I'm just going to jump ahead to those other two sheets. And again, Kim, I don't know if you have them, you don't have them but I have them here on this. Um, and, and on this, this, this shows activities that are occurring in Ashland. So this is at the um, water treatment plant driveway, and this is the culvert. And this is the north side of, of Wilson Street at Howe Street. So again, that's all Town of Ashland, Ashland Notice of Intent. Mm -hmm. And we opened our hearing with them last week. So now I'm going to focus on this area, which begins back on that sheet. So this is that area to the right side of the uh, lagoon driveway. As you come down the lagoon driveway, uh, that's here. And we're right on the municipal boundary of, of Hopkinton and Ashland. And what we believe is historically, if you were to go back in time, you would have found that the water in this section of this watershed went off in this direction east and then went north under this uh, culvert that's there. Um, there uh, there's a fairly robust crossing there. These are granite slabs that are built along a masonry wall going underneath uh, Wilson Street and, and coming to the other side of the road. Um, at some point, the town of Ashland did work in the town of Hopkinton and rerouted the water from this easterly location to the west, bringing that water back to the treatment plant here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no design work for that. There was no uh, filing in Ashland or Hopkinton for that water. There was an emergency. They, they thought the road was going to wash out. Right. Yep. And so, so they were responding to a field condition. And they honestly thought it was their road and not the town of Hopkinton's road. Um, they put in a 12-inch um, CM, uh, excuse me, it's a, a PVC pipe, HDPE. Mm -hmm. uh, perforated, and, and that runs along the uh, road <coughs> point here. Uh, if you were to look at the watershed dynamics for that, uh, that pipe is woefully inadequate to convey the storm water through here, and that's what we witnessed during those storm events last summer. So what we're proposing to do is to reinstitute what we believe had been historically here, uh, but improve it to the extent we can by making a slight depression here, because uh, it's a natural depression anyways, and let the water then settle in this area and then convey over into that box culvert and then go north. Um, this shows it in better detail in this section and then I've got some pictures. Um, actually, I did, the pictures were in the, in the supplemental filing and I can just hand those out so we can pass them along here. There's, li there's labeling uh, on the bottom of those. But this is that box culvert. So when you do get to see that, I actually got down into the culvert and got, got up to take a shot uh, so that you can see how robust that crossing is and with the masonry walls on either side. Um, this is on the north side, so you can see the water line in the culvert that's there. So those pictures really don't help. The rest of the pictures are all for the area on the south side of the road. And that would come through, through here again and cross. Uh, we had also obtained a commentary from Beta mm -hmm. that was October 13th, and we addressed that, and there were a number of items um, that were in that. Uh, some of them pertain, so we have a bit of an overlap, which is with the other notice of intent filing for the zero legacy. But the ones that were specific to, you know, to this area here um, really just had to do with the sizing of, of the, uh, the stone and, 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 and what that feature is. And so I, I didn't get any comments back again. I don't think that you got anything from Phil. I didn't. I get didn't. We can yeah, kind of okay. get get into that. Okay. Yeah. So so I you know I feel like tonight we're still presenting information. We're still discussing information, and we're not expecting uh, to get a decision from you this evening uh, or to move that matter. Um, so I'm prepared to you know continue. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to get all on the same page with this. I'm trying to work in another community with other aspects of this. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's not a you know it's not a simple task, but uh, to the you know for your perspective, I do have to go into your buffer zones to do this work. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize that. Um, that's, I mean, someone went into your buffer zones previously and did work there without you knowing about it, and 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 really diverted that water from our perspective. So now that we've come out there and kind of seen what's going on, 
this is just a natural way for the water to go, and it's going to be a, in a much more controlled manner and in a, in a, in a better uh, way of conveying that flow. Uh, again, it's not in your jurisdiction, but you know, just understand what, the, the, what this culvert looks like today. It has no bottom in it any longer. It's washed out this water line that's on this side of the road. Um, so we just want to make that improvement. Um, if I can segue into the, the other notice, um, mm -hmm. I, I could do that and come back if you'd like. So um, again, going back on our sheet. Kim, this will go back to the one you got. Thank you. Yes. So this is in that overview. Uh, so what we're looking to try to do here is make improvements in phase, um, the, the first phase, if you will, of the project was this first row, the second phase was the second row, and the third phase was the back end. So this detention basin was part of that um, second, third phase. And what we're looking to do is make an improvement to this basin, um, and, and then also to make an improvement to the phase four basin, which none of this work has been done here yet. And this is coming in off of the uh, access road to the Pulte project, um, I don't remember the name of it. Um, water, water view, I think it's called. It's it's coming in off of uh, the Pulte project here, right? Phase yeah. four. Yeah. Um, but what 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 we have the opportunity to do here is with this basin, we were looking to to relocate it and make its geometry um, more suitable to making it, it have a, a larger capacity and infiltrative capacity. These detention <coughs> basins, when they were originally designed, were designed on half inch infiltration. We're proposing to do one inch infiltration. Um, we may not have had the right um, description for that because when we did our uh, peer review with Ashland, Ashland's uh, engineer had said that we were um, in, in a uh, outstanding resource water. Basically, the Hopkins Reservoir would be a, a hydroplastic water supply uh, because of a well system that's there. However, it is not. Technically, their wells are drawing water um, that is tributary with the reservoir, not from the reservoir. So we are only required to do half inch, but we'd still like to stick with the one inch, uh, just being more environmentally friendly than that. We did do soil testing in the phase four area. The soils are just like we found here at this section of the site. So this whole area is, is really like a class C, D soil. Uh, we found that it's, it's not very permeable. Um, when it gets wet, it likes to stay wet. Um, but it is dry with depth, and that's the one good thing when you dig holes here, that they're dry holes. But um, that's what we found through this whole upper section of the site. When we got down into the back section of the site, in this area uh, in particular, we had very high permeability rates. We have very high permeability rates here, and we also got them here. When we do our design calculations, we're using the imputed rate, which is 0.3 um, inches per hour. When in the field, we found this to be 1.4. Uh, we didn't do the testing here originally, Bowler did, uh, but they also found this to be a permeable area. So the, the, the good news is the areas where we're actually trying to put the stormwater are suitable areas. Mm -hmm. uh, this detention basin does drain. Uh, this area here, we, we're bringing some, we, we've had some of this water being trapped, so we're not bringing it all down through here. But when we do get stormwater here on storm events, it infiltrates readily. Um, so that, that, that is one good feature to have in this area. And we're again using the calculations based upon the imputed rate versus the not the um, the observed rate. So in order to expand those detention basins, you're going to need to um, uh, move into the buffer zone um, more than what was originally proposed. That's right. right. That's right. So, so so again, these are those pictures for those areas. And so I'm going to go into the next sheet because they thank you, Kim. We have that detail sheet. Um, so I'll just I'll use the upper one here this one the end, if you don't mind I'll go back to you. Um, so when we originally designed this, we were going um, beyond this 25 foot buffer. So uh, one of the comments that came back from Beta was, look, try, try to make that better. So we went back and we pulled everything back to 25. Then we also took the outlet and we, we broadened it so that when the water does leave this, it's going to go out through this way and travel back into this area here mm -hmm. uh, for this basin. And this basin is going to be kept at all at the same elevation that's there. And then we also highlighted the core that's already been built. So we're tying basically into that core with the new limits. So this is already here. And then we're going to expand it through here and bring it around to this area. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm open to doing more restoration plantings. We could do something, you know, to, to help enhance that buffer zone that we have to, you know, basically get permission from you to be able to go into here. Uh, there is a lot of large vegetation through here, um, down in the low parts of the slope, which would be another opportunity to go in that direction, but we would have much greater impact. Um, we're on contour here, so we're basically on grade through the work activity here. So it's not a big cut, it's not a big fill. Okay. Um, the, we also highlighted for fill, which is why that other one was red, the core for the um, detention basin at, at uh, Burkdale, which was phase two basin. And this is the phase four basin. So again, we're highlighting where the core is gonna be located and then um, how that, that basin would react with its, um, its um, sump area for the um, initial basin for the discharge here. So again, all those features are on the plan. We've made this basin much bigger than what it was originally designed to be. We're not going into your 50 foot buffer zone with the activities down here, however. It's only here, because I have no room to go anywhere else. Right, yeah, okay. Um, so, so, so yeah, um, okay. Excuse me. You know, the spirit of, <coughs> You know, we understand that Ashland is, um, you know, very interested in, you know, these measures that are being proposed and, and um, you know, working out to a solution where uh, they're not getting impact from the site. Um, you know, so in the spirit of, you know, working with Ashland, um, you know, we, uh, you know, we want to work with you to get these measures approved. Um, you know, I think what we would like to see is like the roof drains at the site right now are being tied into a manifold and being discharged to the detention basin. Yeah, for the most part, I did, we did a separate sheet. Um, I, I didn't get it to you, but I did get it to John Gelsich because uh, Phil Paradis had asked for that mm -hmm. as part of my planning board modifications plan. Uh, I can give you that. What we so what we said in our our application back to you was that we, we needed we needed to control the site, as you know. Right. So every house had a. Um, a foundation drain system that was tied into the drainage system and then we took the roof drains and we basically tied it into that as well not obviously not right at the foundation limits we took them a bit off the house and then we dropped it down into that so that it, so that we no longer would dump that water onto the ground next to the homes so that was done as a mitigation measure in construction uh, we have the ability to then take all those roof drains and put them back onto the ground again now that we have stabilization um, because that's basically, if you went back to Bowler's plan, that's basically what they had called for. There was no provision for roof drainage for this project. Yeah, uh, so I think, I, I think what we would um, like to see is for that, uh, rather than being discharged to the surface, being dr discharged into dry wells at the site. But we found that didn't work. That's what I'm getting at is that the, the site isn't permeable up at the upper reaches of the site. We, we initially tried to do that. It doesn't work. So, so what does work though is in the lower reaches. So, so right now, all of the water, almost all of the water, most of the water, does get tied into the drainage system. It does go down to detention basin three, the one that I've shown you here, and the one that we're going to expand. So, if we leave some of those units tied in, still, it will come here and it will get infiltrated, uh, and it will get treated. Now, for example, the, these few homes that are on the back of the project side, they do go out the back. And I wish I had that exhibit. So beta has the plan that yes. shows yes. what's being discharged into the detention yes, basin? Sir. It does. They do now. And, uh, and what we could do... What's that? It's just news to me. As a yeah, was, they asked for it, but I'm sorry, Kim, yeah. I didn't yeah. get it to you. Or you could, you could exhibit it right now, so I apologize. And I don't... Think I mean, I, I guess I'll I defer to describe you where where it is, because what if I could just let me go back to this plan, because this plan will show. You. So, so I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is, you know, uh, you know, the concern is is the runoff from the from the site and, and not as getting properly maintained. So I'm going to defer to Kerry and. Um, <laughs> Kim, you know, if, 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 yeah, if, if the infiltration drains from, you know, for the rooftop runoff 
isn't going to be effective, then what other LID measures can we implement at the site that's going to preclude, you know, runoff from getting off site right. and, and keeping it on site? Right. Well, so we are making the basins larger, and, and we do have good infiltration soils there, and that's what we've proven over, over this this. Two year yeah, but we're talking, uh, we're, we're talking about mitigation measures because of the expansion of these two detention basins. Uh, that's why I said you, we, we should look at, I'm willing to do vegetation, I'm willing to do other things off, even offline or in some other location to, to help improve those those situations. We do, we do have a, a, a public garden area that's going to be done at the top reaches of the site. There is a dog park that's going there. There's a lot of planting materials that are going in for the project. So there are ways to enhance what we're doing. I'm just being practical about the stormwater component. If you look at the, the hydrology here uh, uh, and the mapping of the soils, the soils are not very suitable on the upper reaches of the site. At the lower reaches of the site, they're uh, highly I, I, suitable. Yeah, we get that. We've, okay. we've heard that many so, times. Um, and we do have the ability to, to nip it all in the butt with phase four. I'm just sorry that we got <coughs> caught on this at the, you know, a later juncture, but... Um, I, I, I will get you that plan. I'm not try, again trying to get this done, that other notice done this evening as well. I'll get you that so we can make a better decision about the okay. drainage piece. Okay. Um, uh, and then, you know, Beta did provide um, some feedback to us. They, they got your comments and they came back with um, a second um, response with information that they need from you. Which we addressed on on um, the October twenty sixth. Yeah, this was ten thirty one. Correct. Yeah. The I date. Believe this was a ten thirty one comment. So uh, essentially, um, Beta hasn't commented since you last commented. Okay. So, th um, so so then we captured those comments. Then is what I'm getting. So. I'm sorry, Jeff. Can I kind of chime oh, I'm in? I'm sorry. Here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of taking over. I, yeah. um, I I read through your comments to Beta's comments essentially, and I noticed that in a lot of cases you didn't provide the information that they were looking for. Um, like for example, Beta asked for you to show the existing and proposed limits of the riprap slopes, and you commented that they were built substantially within the limits. So. It, there was a number of items like that, like show the installed roof drain piping, provide the details for the riprap outfall, redesign, um, provide watershed plans, provide documentation from a hydrogeologist, provide documentation and details for modification of the basin number two to a wet basin. And it just seemed like there were so many items that didn't actually get done um, okay. that I conferred with Phil and we both decided that it wouldn't be, it, it might not be Cost-effective, cost, most uh, cost-effective use of Phil's time to respond to okay. that. Okay, all right. So there's, yeah. So I mean, you know, to Kim's point, a lot of that comments weren't addressed, so they're kind of on stand in a holding pattern right now on standby. So I, I think what we need for you to do is just go back to that document, okay, um, the ten thirteen or whatever it was, and um, you know go through the process that Kim went through and just, you know, identify what things weren't submitted to beta and, and if we can just get that to them um, as a first step um, or as the next step, okay. you know, in, in, in this process. But, you know, I sat in on the meeting um, with Ashlyn as did Kim. Um, I was live, but I had to get, I had to drop off before you actually got oh, there. So I, yeah, that was a long meeting. So, so Becca sent me a recording that, that okay. Kim and I both watched. Um, so, you know, we're supportive of, of what they're trying to do. Um, you know, we want to work with them, that we want to work with you, you know, in good faith. But, you know, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, that, that, that when you're putting this information together, being done properly and you know this back and forth is killing me to be no, honest with you, 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 you know, no, it's, 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 it's too hard to keep track of that yeah, thing. I mean, we have GCG that we're dealing with too on the other end the equal to beta so so what I was trying to and, I, and I'm trying to I'm dealing with you know, two towns two DP, DP districts because I had to deal, deal with them as well right. Alicia's asked for a lot of stuff at, mm -hmm. at Nero so um, it, it 
it's a lot of moving parts. Um, I, it will just bring everybody up to the same level. That's what I said. I wasn't trying to do everything here tonight. It's not, uh, we're not there yet. So um, we'll try to be there in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. So I'm prepared to continue both of these matters uh, if there's any other further questions. What was most difficult for us, if, if I can just get a sense, you know, that we, we know we, we don't want to go into your 50 if we can avoid it, and we try. I do have to go into the 25, to up to the 25. I won't, there's no work in the 25 uh, itself. And, and I, if I can get a, just a sense that if we can go in that direction, we could probably, you know, get most of these other items addressed in the meantime. Because in Ashland, I kind of know where I stand with the things I have to do there, okay? It's, it's the things that I'm trying to do in Hopkinton that I just really don't know where we stand. Yeah, so I, I mean, if, if you're I, comfortable with what we're showing, then I think we can try to bring closure to this. Kim, I, I mean, I think we're comfortable, right? You know, to the extent that you can minimize the impacts, you know, we, we I think that that's our expectation. Um, but again, you know, we want to, in good faith, working with Ashland because they've been the ones who have been impacted the most by all this, you know, stuff that's been going on at the site. And it's their drinking water supply. You know, we, we want to, get to the solution and if that you know is going to require some additional buffer zone disturbance then which we would normally be comfortable with um, you know I think the, the Commission would consider that okay I don't want to speak for the other no, members I, but I, I, I'm just trying to get a sense that I'm going in the right direction here because I because I, I will go back and look at that again for, for Phil and I was trying to get planning board matters and I, I know because you had even said to me you we were trying to get all the project changes, and, and one was that we created a wetland, which was actually a good thing, at the back of the um, Bandon lots here. And, but I didn't have it on my notice to you about a project change, because again, I wasn't thinking about it that way, but when I did it for the planning board, I did. So, yeah. uh, uh, so I mean, that's, that's the kind of things, I mean, you know, we should have been notified of that. We weren't notified of the manifold, the roof drains going into the detention basin. You know, these are just little things that um, you know, I mean, I, I know that you're dealing with different regulatory bodies, you know, but, you know, these oversights just get frustrating from, I think, our perspective. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we just want to, you know, like I said, make sure that this is done properly and right. thoughtfully. And um, we're trying to also do the expeditiously. sidewalks. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're also trying to look in the sidewalks, and we actually asked the planning board to allow us, instead of having like, the grass plot between the edge so that we can minimize the impact area, because we have all the stabilized ground to bring it to the edge of the roadway, like it would be in, you know, in many instances. Um, I think the planning board would be supportive of that. We haven't been before them yet. Uh, but pervious we also sidewalk. I, I, I had also mentioned. suggested to, doing it as a pervious sidewalk, even though I recognize that the, the site limitations of this upper upper reaches are not superior, but it's a sidewalk. So what we can do is, it's it's not like trying to take the roof and put it all into one spot. We can take the sidewalk, which is a fairly small area, and we can prep its base so that we can make it so that it will infiltrate most storms. Now there may be some really heavy, heavy storms where it's just going to wash out. Well, it's going to wash anyway, so it doesn't matter. Once it yeah, gets so I think, past you know, its holding capacity. Um, so carry like green gardens and things like that, right? Uh, as LID techniques could be helpful. Yeah. Um, y you know, th thinking about things like that. Well, we have, so, so this whole, oh, can you go back? Yeah. This whole area down here, we have a series of rain gardens that we actually had proposed uh, through this. So all of this area that's coming off of the backs of these lots, they're all small, isolated uh, areas. Again, it's, it wasn't on the plan I submitted to you, but it's on the planning board plan that we're working on. Uh, we, we created this whole zone right here. This didn't exist. All the stormwater from this whole end of the site was to discharge right here on the Bowler plan at the, and go to the gutter of Wilson Street. We actually made this whole basin that didn't exist back with the original plan when we saw what was happening together again last summer. Okay. So, so uh, there are some good things that have come from this. Yeah. Well, we understand it. We just run on the plan. Right. So, so we didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm prepared to continue the two matters um, to your next schedule. Yeah, meeting. Kim, did you have anything else to add? I do. Um, mm -hmm. Just hopefully I can package this nicely into three points. Okay. <laughs> Uh, point number one, um, we're doing an amended order 
let's get a comprehensive plan showing everything that has changed. Okay, you're right. Um, which includes that constructed wetland, and I believe, you know, this has been pointed out to me by Anna Butter, the changes in the IVW buffer zone in this area in the corner, which is well, why I have that pulled up. Thing. Yep, okay. Yep. yep. So, and yeah, I know that they're already so done, let's just get them permitted. All right, so one more thing that I'm trying to do is this parking lot over here, because <laughs> I thought that um, the town was the author of this. It was actually Mr. Gately, but there's some beautiful trees in here. I've already saved those trees. We're going to change the configuration of that parking lot, too. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but all I know is it won't yeah. be as big as it is. Okay. So, uh, Most importantly, you know, within that buffer of the IVW. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get, you know, let's get a record okay. of what, what we we're actually doing there. Um, so, yeah, let's, where we have an amended order, let's get some plans together that are comprehensive um, of all the changes. Okay. Um, the second point would be, um, I would just want to reiterate what Jeff said, like we want to work with the town of Ashland. We want to see these improvements happen. Um, I think from the commission's perspective though, they need that backing from their engineer that says this is, this is, I agree, this is sound engineering okay. so that, you know, we can have that, that behind us as a commission. Um, so that's why we're kind of looking for you to work with beta a little bit more. All right, I will. Um, and then the third point would be um, something interesting that Gene Crouch said at the meeting in Ashland. Um, he was talking about this proposed settling area. Mm. Um, he had brought up that there is a channel in it. Um, and I have observed that channel with water flowing. Um, you know, it's a question in my mind of is that potentially a jurisdictional area? It's complicated. That's why. I, I, so Be Becca had written a whole litany of things today, and I thought, oh, I'm going down a rabbit hole that I don't know if I'll come out of uh, unless I find some pixie dust. Because I don't th like th the culvert. Taking out the culvert on the other side becomes like this other resource area all of a sudden, and I'm, I'm challenged with this. So I, I have Echo Tech coming out mm -hmm. because they're telling me that I have habitat there. Uh, potentially and I just said to Tim I said look this is beyond my pay grade you have to help me with this all the riprap we were proposing to put over in the the, the um, treatment plant driveway they're saying that's all I'm altering bank mm -hmm. and I'm just like well then I won't do it you know I don't I don't know I, mm -hmm. I thought I was trying to make an improvement to make the situation better because it's just a gravel lined right. stream channel and we saw that that was you know being eroded <laughs> so that's why we thought we should do this but yet um, being penalized. I'm, I'm not trying to say. I'm not sure how to overcome know, some of these things. This is not. This is. I'm okay. not trying to say this is absolutely not a no go. I'm just saying I think this needs a little bit more. Uh, I have be, I have that tech coming out. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they, um, this, they, they know these details better than me. I know that DEP so. and Ashland had, like you said, had some of those similar questions as well. Okay. So I just want to make sure that if the commission approves it, that DEP doesn't overturn it. I I understand. And, and so DEP Worcester, I've spoke with directly, and DEP uh, Northeast, and I had a really good conversation with Central and Northeast. I, that's why I said Ecotec, you have to deal with them because I don't think I'm going to be handling this properly. I'm not saying the right thing. So I'm thinking too much engineering and not environmental scientist. So I have Scott Morrison taking care of that. Okay. So I'll probably have them take care of that issue you just raised too, because I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So. So I'll continue those two matters. Yes. Yeah, so chair. Ah uh, yes, sir. Sorry. So earlier we heard from Scott Goddard about how water is mysteriously returning to places in the property because it's not being actively pumped for irrigation purposes, and I wondered if any of that might impact anything here. Hmm. For, so. Um, I don't know what you, what you mean by Eric. So we, the only thing that we did this summer when we were in the drought, no, we actually pumped from water out of it. the time when it was Western Nurseries, that they were apparently were pumping to use for irrigation, and yeah. now that they're no longer pumping groundwater, some of the areas they plan to be wetlands this big are now wetlands this big because the groundwater has come up. Am I, did I oh. misinterpret what he said? No. I haven't seen anything change in our site at all from the time I've been here, but um, other than just, just, just 
you know, that was brought up. Once we started respecting the soils better, we, we've actually done a pretty good job of the place. That's the next thing I wanted to talk to you about. So after you're ready to continue, I'll, I'll ask you about my release of other units. <laughs> okay, so we can get, uh, how much time do you need for this, Mr. Demas? I need five more minutes. I mean, for the, <laughs> for us to, to uh, extend. Oh, 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 I apologize, I misunderstood what you were saying. Well, well, two, two, two weeks, sir. So we have December 6th, December 20th, and January 10th. I, I just go to December 6th if I can. Is that going to be? I, 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 will try, I will try. If I don't have it, Kim, I will ask you just to continue. Okay. I'd like to just try to stay on this. Okay. Um, so if I can get a motion to uh, extend the zero Wilson Street notice of intent and the um, zero Legacy Farms North amended notice of intent to December 6th. Seven. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you All very right. much. So you have an administrative item for me. Do you, do you mind sequentially just going to that and then I will we can leave you? I think we can make this really quick for you. Okay, thank you. So um, this Me is... Meaning um, we would like to get this resolved with the uh, beta stuff before we release any more uh, buildings. I've built everything you've released and Ashland released and I'm, I'm trying to continue to finish the site and stabilize the site, which is what these pictures you know, show us successfully doing throughout the site. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm doing it sequentially. I'm doing everything you've asked me to do and I'm not trying to avoid doing any of these other things. Um, you know, we've, we couldn't, we filed the notice with you folks as soon as you asked us to. We couldn't file anything further because Ashland wouldn't sign the permits. I mean, we lost we lost two months because they didn't sign the application. And, and since they've signed it, we've stayed right on this. I, I, I would ask you to please allow us to continue to doing work there. I mean, they have units that are committed to people, and we're just trying to finish the, that end of the project, and I will still have units. And they're not releasing them all. I gave you a sequence, and I'm following that sequence. When is the beta? Um, when are you going to go through the information that beta was looking for? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm going to be back here on the sixth, December sixth, to review that. I, I will we'll do it immediately. I mean, I just gave I just gave John Gelsich some items to give to beta because he had asked for those for the planning board process, and then I I, I didn't realize his response was that you had, you had given, uh, I, I didn't have that, or I would have tried to address that before tonight's meeting. You didn't have it? Uh, the, the week I gave you, I'm not sure of the date. I thought it was a week ago today. No, yesterday. It was the Monday before the Tuesday meeting is you, when I brought you that did, in. So that was November. I went through those responses and they... But he, he didn't, he, he never had, and I actually he, called him and asked him if he would please meet at the site. And he didn't think the budget allowed for that. So I said I would raise the budget if I could so that there would be time for him to come out to the site because I thought it would be important for him to see firsthand what we're trying to do. So I think his position is that he's looking for some more of this information before he does it on any kind of on-site. Okay. Well, we, we didn't even have um, GCG's comments back yet uh, when Phil had given us his. So we, we just got those the, in November. Because theirs were addressed November fourth, and we addressed those and just gave those back to them. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to keep both peer review engineers satisfied. Uh, I, I'm going to keep working this process, but I, I don't think it, I think it would be grossly unfair for you not to release more units to, to continue. How many more do you want to release? I, we they, we had a number of them here, so it's two duplexes and then some singles, and then there would still be these other units to finish. Um, so it's about, I'm asking for about half of them to be released that are left, and then to be another half to finish. And I would I would think that we would be done this process with you in the next 28 days. So to so not release anything in that time period really doesn't make a lot of sense. So you have eight units that you're requesting to be released. Yes, and two of them are duplexes. So what if we release four of them and then, you know, if the information is provided... Yeah, that's fine, Mr. Chairman, that's fair. Can we that seem reasonable? Uh, Peter, yep. some of the uh, requested duplexes are in the area which is currently um, providing temporary storage in the middle there. 
Uh, yes, right here. We, okay. this, it's still going to be here. That's what the 28 day is showing is what keep, we, we keep nipping that down, okay. but we don't need as much capacity. Right. right. My staging area is here. That's up gradient of that. And then, so we're coming in, we're coming in this way. So I don't know if the commission just wants to be mindful of that there's a little bit of temporary um, volume storage in that area. When it's specifying which units. Yeah, but we, we asked for these right here, and that's why I kept this, so that it would stay there. And that's still up gradient of where my staging area is here. Um, and How much soil is out there? We've gotten rid of most of it. That, that, that's what I'm trying to get. Is right a, now, I just like 20 hand. cubic yards, 40 cubic yards. Oh, as far as the stockpile area that's here, it's not a large area at all any longer. I would say I probably have you know, 200. To 300 cubic yards on the ground, and then and then we have basically the hole here. So we just want to start stabilizing, you know, finish stabilizing this portion of the site. And I think I have a picture. Okay, Kim, you think half is okay? Yeah. And then we'll, we can release the other half at the next meeting if we get the information we need. That is what the purview of the commission is. <laughs> I, I would appreciate that um, consideration. Thank you. Carrie, you look tired. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not of any inclination to release anything until we get everything because we keep asking for stuff to get it. That's, that's where my I'm personal right. opinion. But that's exactly where I'm. I don't know how many meetings we've heard. I will have that together next time. But, but it's not like we didn't do we didn't do anything. No. We've been doing these responses. It's it's. If it was done right the first time, we would never be here. But. <laughs> I didn't um, do it. I honestly didn't do I, it. We've heard that a lot of times too, <laughs> but we're still at the situation where we're at. So that's just. And my with all due respect, the data approved it too, and I, I, I and, well, and I mean, and I'm I, trying to build it. You know, I think. Um, look at. I think Ashlyn. Uh, I, I think it was Jean made the point. You know, we're not looking to point fingers here. We're looking for solutions. Um, yes. So you know. I don't want to hear any more during the process of these hearings, you know, it was Bohler, Beta, whatever, uh, you know, we get it, okay? So we don't need to keep hearing that. Um, and, you know, um, things are being done on site, it's getting stabilized, you know, we appreciate that, the soil piles are, you know, the volume is lower. But, you know, what's frustrating for Kim and the commission is we keep getting applications that are incomplete. And, you know, we can't have beta review the information, even though, you know, they're coming to us and they want to review it. It's like it doesn't make sense to do it because, you know, to have you look at it again, enough data hasn't been submitted to make it cost effective. So, and I understand you're going back and forth between us and Ashland, but, um, you know, I just, I, I feel like, you know, the effort isn't being put into the documents that are being submitted. You know, it's just kind of like, let's get them into the commission so we can say we submitted something. Um, I'm sorry you have that feeling. That's not what's happening here. Um, I mean, I'm going to defer to the other commission members on whether or not, you know, we release any of the additional units. I, I understand the predicament that you're in, that you want to get it done, people are waiting. Um, I would be open to some, you know, not all of them, but some. Uh, four out of the like, eight, yeah, Janine. Yeah, whatever, is four more than you could do in two weeks. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm re that's reasonable, so I'm, I'd accept that. I, I probably will, in that two-week period, get one of them all put together. The duplexes, they take a lot of effort, but I, I'm just, I need, I need to keep the momentum going on the construction <coughs> so that I can get things done. Um, and I'm sorry if, if, that, that it's not complete, but I, I, I will do my damnedest so that that's not the issue. Yeah, so the other, you know, if we, if we do allow that, then the other units, I think, are not going to be released until I these NOIs are chair. done. I heard you. You know, the submitted and incomplete. Um, 
that sound okay? Yeah, it's, it's awkward. I mean, because this is like a broken record. <coughs> Right, can I get a motion to release? Which four do you want released, Mr. Venus? Um, it's uh, 68, 66, 64, 62. Can I get a motion to release those from the cease and desist? I'll make that motion. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Where were you? I didn't hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> you could be su supportive, Mr. Harrow. I'd be most appreciative. Did you hear his voice? It was a very quiet. <laughs> my throat was hung up. I'm, I, I don't like the idea. I made the motion, but I don't like the idea. So are you in favor? <laughs> <laughs> it says he was a no. Is what he just said. Oh, no. So you're a no. So we've had three nays and two yeses. Yep. Motion fails. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Bemis. But you don't need to read this. Correct. December 6th, right. And it is it was a, a holiday remote. week. Remote. Remote, yeah, I can yes. in person. All right. Um, All right. So the special conditions for you ready to move along? Yeah. Kim. Yep. So the special conditions for the SWIP inspections. Yep. I'll make inspectors. this short, short and sweet. The um, EPA is updating the CGP this year. In the updated CGP, they have a new training requirement. Um, they're putting out their own training, or they're requiring the inspector to have specialized. Um, erosion and sedimentation control certification. Um, that training requirement does not go into effect until February of 2023. So anybody who gets a CGP permit from now until February of 2023 doesn't have to comply with the requirement, which has been pointed out to me. So in order to <laughs> cover that, um, I'm proposing that we echo the EPA's training requirement in our um, special conditions in our orders. Long story short. So we can capture it until February. The training is free and it's online. It's like six hours you said? It's about yeah. six hours to go through the training, yeah. So you want us to vote on this? That wouldn't hurt. All right, if I can get a motion. Put it in all the, yeah. So your panel will speak up this time. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrie, you're a stormwater. And you think that's a good uh, recommendation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't done the training yet. Have you done the training? I haven't, but I am a CPSC, so I feel like I'm exempt. But I think I'm going to do the training anyways, just qualifies. to see. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the underline is just for me. No longer qualified. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> it's not specifically for you, but yeah. All right, I'm going to motion to approve Kim's recommendation on the SWIP inspections. I'll make that motion. And the second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 I feel like you're allowed into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was him. <laughs> Okay, and we have a couple. I decided to say I on that I one. That was a fun uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a boring proposal. I'll give yes. that. <laughs> is, it, is it time for public forum? It yes, is. We're working right. on it. <laughs> okay. Is that you? So, public forum? Yeah. So, just reporting that Jim had his surgery this morning oh. and that uh, it went well and that uh, he's down and out from physical activity for a while, but all in all is good. All right, that's good news. Now exactly what the surgery was, I'm not really sure. Uh. I think I know, but because I only think I know, I don't want to say. Okay, thank you for the update, Ed. Then we had the beaver dam um, issues. Kim, do you want to give us an update or Ed? Well, there's a beaver dam thing in here. There's two there's beavers. There's a dam beaver thing. There's two beaver updates. Two beaver updates. No. So um, we'll do we'll do the emergency cert first. So we had a request for an emergency certification. 
uh, for the breaching of a beaver dam. It's located in Whitehall Brook, um, right under the um, Mass Pike here. So uh, they made us this nice little map. So this is the little dam. This is land underwater and the culvert. Um, so this is actually an area that is covered under the I-495 interchange project. Um, so as part of that project, they're going to be replacing this culvert and they're going to be impacting land underwater and these pink polygons. Um, so this beaver dam was kind of doomed to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, very soon it will be breached um, regardless. Uh, the Board of Health has already uh, issued the permit for trapping. Um, so they are looking to alleviate the, the flooding back up over there for the beaver dam. Um, I did let the applicant know that I would like to have a discussion about uh, beaver deceivers in the future. Um, the applicant will be around for approximately the, at least the next four years um, doing this construction. So if the beavers return, it will be within that time frame that the applicant is actively in construction. And I think we will have that conversation at that time. So, so we trap them, where do they bring them? <laughs> they don't bring them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a farm and a far. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Kim, are you going to send the eviction notice to the Beaver family? Oh, I hope no. That's for to help. Did they put any little beavers in the plan there? No. no. <laughs> 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 it's getting late. So okay, so what was the vote second one? Vote to ratify the emergency. Oh, yeah. Uh, so motion to ratify the emergency beaver removal. No moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a no? <laughs> it was that a was there. Yeah. I'm tired. No, that was a yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so second beaver issue. Um, more of a public service announcement. We did have a report of um, a beaver dam that was located approximately in this area. Um, so this is Pond Street. Um, this is a parcel owned by conservation, owned by us. Um, and there was somebody who had a game camera over here who captured a beaver dam being breached by a private citizen. Uh, the beaver dam was located on our land. Um, so this is just a public service announcement that those types of activities do require permits from conservation um, and is discouraged um, from being done. The perpetrator, as I understand, has come forward, um, <laughs> not to me, but to some other folks, trail folks in town, um, and kind of said, I sh probably shouldn't have done that. There was an error in my ways, so. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I still do not know who it is, but um, I think they have some type of remorse, but hopefully they have learned a lesson that that was not in, the, in defense of the, the correct way to... Okay. I love this story. <laughs> <laughs> there was no water there this year, and there were no beavers there this year. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, it's probably a, a dam that they moved out of, you know, a ways ago. Um, I believe if they want to come back, they'll, you know, they'll re-architect it, you know, so. Certain, certain other parties are contemplating helping the beavers by providing material for the beavers <laughs> to reconstruct the dam, but not actually reconstructing the dam. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is all. All right, motion to adjourn. Salute. So second. Second. All favor. Oh, my goodness. Where's the list?